A seed oil is a polyunsaturated fat. Polyunsaturated fats are the things that we're encouraged to eat. Um, the Heart Foundation tells us we should be eating it constantly. We should be lining up at the supermarket and filling our trolleys with margarine and throwing all the butter away. Margarine is made from polyunsaturated fats. The polyunsaturated fats used in margarine are what I would call a seed oil, which is shorthand for oils extracted from seeds by mechanical means. They did not exist in human history prior to about there, which is 1909. This, this graph, by the way, goes 1909 to 2005. Um, prior to that, fat in the human diet consisted of animal fat with occasional access, depending on where you live, to what I would call tropical fruit oils, like olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, and avocado oil. So prior to that, the only sources of polyunsaturated fat in the diet were fish, which is a small amount of omega-3, um, and the tropical fruit oils in equatorial regions. After the 1900s, when the Americans discovered how you could extract really valuable oil from seeds that were otherwise being thrown in the bin, cotton seeds largely, and ultimately soy seeds, soybeans, it steadily got used more and more and more until when we get to the other end of that graph, almost 100% of dietary fat being delivered to the US and Australian population is based on seed oils. There's almost no animal fat in our diet. So when the Heart Foundation admonishes you to stay away from those evil animal fats, you, you find that almost impossible to do. You, you find it almost impossible to eat the animal fats because they just don't exist in our dietary system. That is a massive change in the space of 100 years. Even worse is when you start to notice other correlations. So this correlation is with melanoma. The grey line at the bottom is incidence of melanoma in the United States. So these are US uh, polyunsaturated fat figures and US melanoma figures. The reason I chose the melanoma as an example of cancer is simply because it's the one we have the earliest records for. It's the most easily diagnosed cancer. So we've got good records going back to 1935. Now, they'll tell you that melanoma is caused by sunshine, but I find it very, very difficult to believe that a child in 2000 is exposed to, what, 40, 50 times as much sunshine as a child in 1935? <laughs> That's just plain out unreasonable. But that logic seems to have escaped anyone telling us about what causes melanoma. Once again, it's a correlation. It proves nothing, but it should alert us to something, which is that it's a pretty strong correlation, very strong correlation, even to the point where the little bumps are almost in line, they're just 30 years apart. Um, doctors have noticed this. In particular, a fellow by the name of Bruce Mackey in Sydney in the early 1970s noticed this and started looking for the amount of polyunsaturated fat in the fat cells of his patients versus the incidence of melanoma in his patients. And he found the same correlation. And all that's missing now is an explanation. And there are good biochemical explanations for why a polyunsaturated fat, in particular the omega-6 oil, which dominates oils from seeds, would be a causative agent for cancers and not just melanoma. Probably don't have time to go into it in great deal of detail, but... Um, I do want to point out a few things about polyunsaturated fat. The Heart Foundation will tell you that what you need to do to avoid having a heart attack or anything else really uh, is stay away from places like McDonald's and eat lots of margarine. But there's no functional difference between what McDonald's are cooking their chips in and what's being sold to you as margarine. Both seed oils both high in polyunsaturated fats. And I just did this little exercise for fun, but it's a little hard to see from the bottom here. But what this is, is a small, <coughs> medium, and large fries. The blue one is the current levels of polyunsaturated fat from these McDonald's. And the red ones are what they were prior to 2004. So 
And in 2004, McDonald's was persuaded by the Hart Foundation to change its then cooking oil, which was largely tallow or beef fat, um, for canola oil. And they took their high unsaturated fat content from, in a small fries, about half a gram to about four, and in a large fries, up over almost seven grams. Now, given that I would suggest that for the average adult in Australia today, six grams is the maximum, absolute maximum per day you should be consuming of this stuff, that's going to put most of us a long way in trouble. Now, I caused a bit of stir recently on my Facebook page by posting this graph, but I just wanted to put it up here for your benefit as well. The reason I caused the stir was because I, I didn't put the red, two red lines in there before I posted it. And people got all worried about bacon. And you should worry about bacon because in Australia, bacon is largely lot fed, um, and which means that most of the fat, the polyunsaturated fat in it, is very high in omega-6 oils. If it's an organic bacon, it'll be, it'll be in a different position on that graph. But still, it's worth noticing where the meats rank in terms of polyunsaturated fat content. It's also worth noticing that this, these are all 100 grams, this is only 20 grams, and so is the butter. 20 grams is the amount you would spread on a couple of pieces of toast. So, you eat a margarine, your polyunsaturated fat is going off the scale. Butter, barely noticeable. Um, oh, and this one, I really don't have time to talk about this in detail, but I will just mention it. Humans are not adapted to large quantities of polyunsaturated fat um, to the point where humans, unlike cows, um, accumulate any polyunsaturated fats they can find, particularly mothers, um, in their subcutaneous fat stores. The reason they do it is because it's such a rare fat in our natural environment that we are designed to uh, store as much of it as we can get a hold of. Why? Because it's really handy stuff for building babies. When you're making a baby, building a brain, building a nervous system and an immune system, you need good supplies of omega-3 and omega-6 polyunsaturated fats. Unfortunately, we have no upper limit on storage. So when you feed a mother um, corn oil, which is at, at percentages which are similar to the current dietary load of polyunsaturated fat, when you feed a mother corn oil, her breast milk will contain that much polyunsaturated fat. David, I'm just going to fix it for you. Oh, okay. 